Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today, I'm gonna to be painting sun-loving sunflowers and I'm gonna be sipping on some coffee today. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. For my paint today, I'm using acrylic paint. My colors are cobalt blue, titanium white, chrome orange, Mars black, green oxide, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, deep yellow, and chrome yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, a number 10 round synthetic brush, and a number four round synthetic brush. And throughout the painting process, I will refer to these as small, medium, and large. And of course, you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same exact paint and the brushes and all that good stuff. So that's down there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the first step is I'm gonna be painting my sky. I'll be using my large brush. The colors I'm using are blue, white, and orange. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna be using a left to right, kind of a crisscross light um, left to right motion as I'm coming from the top to the bottom. I'm gonna do it in a gradient, so I'm gonna have it a little bit darker at the top with my blue. Then I'm gonna fade it into almost white in through here. And then as I get down towards the bottom, I'll use a little bit of orange. I will not be washing my brush throughout the entire process, but I will be changing the quantity of each color as I go through the process. So right now I have about equal parts of blue and white on my brush at the same time. I'm starting at the top with this left to right crisscross, long kind of light. I'm not pressing really hard, just kind of using the, the edges of the bristles. Now, I'm not gonna wash my brush, but I'm just gonna pick up white paint. And what's gonna happen is my sky is going to naturally get lighter and lighter as I come down the area. So as I put that paint on, I will bring it down, but I'm also gonna go ahead and cross it over or back it into that previous section. So they look like they belong together and they're just kind of fading into one another. Yours might end up looking like you've got some nice gentle clouds that are drifting by, or it might look like a beautiful solid color, like a nice glorious, you know, clear blue sky, sunny day. So however it ends up is really quite fine because there are so many different variations in the sky the way that it can look so you can certainly have yours looking whatever way that you would like to i'm just going to try and get mine to go a little bit lighter as it goes down towards the bottom of my canvas so again i'm not picking up any more blue i'm just picking up white as i travel down the canvas and it's you can see it's naturally getting lighter and lighter and then i just kind of back that color back up into the previous section to ensure that they are blending well and that it doesn't just look like I have distinct sections to my, to my canvas. So I still have a little bit of blue on my brush, which is great because it's just adding a bit of a, of a tint 
to my lighter sky as I come down towards the bottom. And in a minute, I'm gonna start adding that orange paint into the mixture. So what the orange is gonna do is it's gonna add a bit of an atmospheric dimension down at the bottom of the sky. If you look off into your horizon every now and again, you can, a lot of, a lot of the atmosphere as it's reaching the earth tends to look a little bit on the warmer side. Um, so that's kind of what I'm adding here. It could insinuate a sunset, a sunrise, um, just kind of atmospheric dimension, whatever you envision it to, to represent, it works. So I just added a bit of orange onto my brush without washing it, and I'm gonna get this to mix in with the colors down at the bottom. So I've got my dirty brush, I added a bit of orange, and I'm gonna to start to pick up a little bit of white also in a second once I've got this blended a bit here. So I'm picking up a bit of white just to get it to go into the tonal value that I want. So if it's too dark or too light, you can always adjust it a little bit by adding either adding more orange or more white accordingly. And if you had a, a, a bit of blue uh, still left on your brush, you may detect a, a slight greenish hue to it, which is totally fine because that's just gonna represent maybe some distant foliage or out of focus foliage or you know something of that nature. So it all really ends up working out because this orange will be very complimentary and if it turns green it'll be very complimentary to your flowers. And then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your sky all nice and painted here, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm going to do for the next step is I'm doing the first layer to the center of the flowers. So I'm gonna use my large brush and I'm gonna be using brown and black paint. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do a series of um, dotted type of oval slash circle shapes to represent the centers. I'm gonna have four flowers. You can certainly have as many as you'd like to. You could have five or two or one or whatever you'd like to do. Um, but I'm going to be using my large brush. I'm going to start with brown paint on my brush. So I'm using a bristle brush which tends to have a mind of its own when it comes to the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and kind of squish it into my paint. And this is going to give me a good amount of paint within the bristles and it will hold them together when I want them to be held together. So I'm gonna have one here, 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 and a little sliver of one over here. If I want my sunflower to look like it's facing straight at the viewer, I'm gonna have kind of a circle. If I want it to be tipped in any direction, like tipped towards looking up at the sun or turned a little bit, I'll have an oval. So this one here, I'm gonna have kind of looking up at the sun a little bit. So I'm gonna have myself a little bit of an oval type shape that's gonna be tipped in the direction. The top is gonna to go to the right and the bottom is gonna to go to the left. And I'm just kind of dotting in this brown paint. And of course, yours can be larger or smaller than mine. It's, it's okay. I just am using this dotting type of technique in order to get a real nice textured look to it. This one right here, I'm gonna have, let's see, somewhere in this vicinity, and this one's gonna be more looking directly at us. So again, you can have your, your centers really big or really small. There's a lot of different varieties of sunflowers. Some of them have really small centers. Some of them have really huge centers. I think it might depend on the age of the flower or the size of the flower. If the flower is really, really big, the center is gonna look larger than the petals. So it's, there's lots of varieties and, and ways that you can make this look. So if it's not exactly like mine, it's okay. So this one here, I'm gonna have this one tipped a little bit, um, maybe turned a little bit. So I'm gonna have my, I'm gonna do it more of like an oval type shape. So something like this is how I'm gonna create this one in through here. And again, yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine. I'm just giving a nice representation and I want my edges to be fluffy kind of, um, so that way they look like they're gonna transition nicely into the actual petals themselves. This one over here, I'm just gonna have a little sliver of um, a flower showing over here. So we're just gonna do just a little edge of it in through here. And then once you've got your um, 
the base with the brown. I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint. So a little bit of black paint on the edge of my brush. I'm gonna create a shadow around the bottom edge of it. And I'm, I'm doing this during this step because I want it to easily blend in with that brown. So I'm just gonna kind of tap it in along the bottom and then just lightly blend it in towards the center area of the flower. And if you feel like you've got too much black, you can always pick up some of the brown. I'm doing this more or less on the bottom edge of it and I'm not using a lot of paint, just a little bit on my brush and I'm just kind of tapping it so it blends in a little bit over here. Just wanna do just a tiny bit over here. And then we're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your base coat for the center of your flowers, you can wash and dry this, or wash, put away, or put aside the large brush, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our petals. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush, and the colors I'm using are chrome yellow and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a very pale, light yellow. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my yellow and mix it in with some of my white. And the reason why I am choosing to do my base coat of my petals in this pale yellow is because I want my petals to be really vibrant in the long run. And I want them to have, um, I don't want them to be really see-through. And I know that yellow is very see-through. So I am choosing to do a very light color as my base coat. So when I go to build my petals, I'm gonna have nice opacity to them and, I, and they'll be easy to build the vibrant colors on top of them. So this is where I was heading. We'll call it lemon yellow, even though it's a little lighter than that. So, but, but that's what we'll call it for today, light yellow or, or lemon yellow. So I've got that going on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be making my petals on the longer side, on the more narrow side, but because this is the first layer, I don't need to think of every petal as an individual petal. I'm really just going for kind of a silhouette of sorts for the exterior of the, um, of the petals because we'll bring all the detail into them with our highlights and shadows and stuff later. So these sunflowers that I'm doing, the petals are gonna be, the longest petals are gonna be about half the distance or half the length of the interior circle. So if I was to say, okay, this is about half the length or half the distance of that interior circle, I could just kind of do this and give myself a little bit of a marker and say, okay, well, that's about the longest I want the petals to go. Again, you can have a variety of lengths, but that's what I'm gonna be going for. And I can do that with each, each flower. If I want the flower to be looking straight at me, I'm gonna have the petals almost the same length around the whole thing. If I want this to be tipped, I would have like petals falling over on one side and then they would be their longest over here. So as I do this, I'm gonna be talking you through my thought process, but you can certainly bend yours a little bit differently. Some sunflower petals look very organized and some look a little bit more on the messy side. So if yours tend to be a little bit more um, exciting than mine or more organized than mine, it still will all work out. So here we go. I'm going to start with the center one. I might have an overlapping of um, these two. Their petals might overlap, which is okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to try and avoid it over on this one, but these two might overlap a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of giving myself these little bit of an arcing type of line going throughout these. And I'm really not terribly concerned about how perfect the edges are or if they even um, are exactly in the same formation. I like to give mine some nice bend to them. But again, I am I know that I'm going to be doing a lot of detail, a lot of additional detail onto these. So as I am creating them, I know that it's okay if, you know, there's a little chaos to them. I actually like there to be a little bit of chaos. As I'm touching the inside part of the circle, I do want to make sure that I am hitting that and that there's not a lot of gap where you can see the um, sky at that, at that point in time. 
I'm reloading my brush because I'm noticing I it's getting really thin and I can kind of see through it a bit. So I just reloaded my brush and I'm kind of going back in and just adding um, additional petals over in through here. And again, I'm not really going for anything perfect right now, just a real nice thick base around the center and then maybe some a um, little bit more exciting edges as they come towards the ends. And where it hits that center area, I can just pull in or just touch that center a little bit. So that's the basic one in through there. And now as I do the other ones, I can certainly, if this is my, my longest area in the center, my longest petal is going to be about out to here. So that just, again, gives me that visual information. So for this one, I'm going to have this one tipped a little bit. So I know that my, my biggest ones are going to be kind of over in this direction. Again, you can see that I'm curving my petals. That's going to help me to give a lot of movement to this as I start to build my um, the, the dimension on the flower. As I get over towards this left side, they are overlapping or they're going to be behind this front one. I haven't decided which is going to go in front, but as I get around this top side, I want mine to look like they're kind of bending over the edge, the, the far edge. So I'm really just going to kind of do these like bumps on this side. And that's going to, when I go to add the detail, that's going to make them look like they're just bending over onto the other side. And then as I come over to this right side, I'm going to get, have them start to get more long, longer again. But just making sure that I definitely get all the way to that center and that I don't have the center's edge and that I don't have a lot of gaps in between where it's meeting um, that center part. You don't want it to necessarily look like a little spider spider with a whole bunch of little tiny skinny legs. So just make sure that you fill that in enough and that you've got some good um, little tips that come out the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one. This one's going to be turned a little bit towards there. So again, if this is my longest area here and I want my longest petals over here, I can have some maybe out in this, this length here. And then I'm just going to kind of repeat that process. And the side that I want to be the shortest or kind of leaning over is going to be over here. So as I get towards that, I will show you how I'm going to go ahead and execute that. Just making sure again that I've gotten it nice and filled in right along where it's meeting the interior. I think I'm going to have a couple of long ones in through here. And you can see they're not all coming out at the same exact direction. Um, that's going to give just a nice variety. And I'm using a bigger um, round brush. So this is allowing me to give um, each petal kind of happens with one paint stroke. So if I was to use a smaller paintbrush, I would end up having more narrow um, petals, which would, would totally work out too if you, if you wanted them to look a little bit more delicate looking. But I'm going for a nice big alive kind of um, uh, sunflower here. And then this side over here, I think I want these ones to kind of, they're going to be bending over. So I'm going to do a little bit more of what I did over there where I'm just going to kind of have them on the shorter side and maybe with a little bit more rounded edges. You can certainly, of course, overlap a little bit as well. I'm just going for, see if I can keep a little bit of a gap in through there. And then again, just making sure I fill in all this area that touches the center of the flower. And then I just have this one in through here. So this one, I'm going to have just a couple of longer ones down at the bottom. We're just going to be seeing the edge of this one. It is definitely leaning over the, um, we're just, it's turned. So it, we're just going to see these little bits of color along the edges in through here. And then once you've got your main or your base coat for your petals, we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So you're going to just kind of want to wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting the first layer of our stems and our leaves. I'm going to be using my medium brush. I'm going to be using green and brown paint. So at all times, I will have any combination of green and brown on my brush. I'm not going to wash my brush throughout this process so that way I have a variety of tones of a nice natural green 
and brown to work from. So these are very big, sturdy stems. They're gonna be a little bit more narrow at the top and get a little bit wider at the bottom. And then they have these leaves that kind of shoot out the sides of the stems and are kind of long and flat. So, and they also have little leaves along the back side of the flower itself. So I'll have a couple of those kind of poking out as we go through the process. So I'm just gonna load my brush with green and brown. And I'm just gonna work my stems first and then I will put my leaves in place. So I'm gonna have this one coming somewhere. If you just imagine where the center of your flower is and then just kind of come out wherever you'd like to. So some, somewhere in here. You could have done your stems before you put your petals on, but the petals are kind of translucent. So this makes it a little bit easier of a process so you don't have to add too many layers onto your petals. Um, so they, so they don't see the, um, the leaves behind them. So once I've got this on here, I'm just gonna kind of bring my brush down in through here. I'm gonna give them a little bit of a wave or um, a, of a bend so that way it looks a little bit more organic and natural and I'm getting it to go a bit wider as it goes down towards the base. So that's gonna be that one. I'll add all of my um, leaves and stuff on in a second. I just want to get my stems in place. And this one over here I think I'm going to have coming out maybe in through here and then giving it a bit of a curve. And again I'm just kind of widening it, widening it a little bit as I go down towards um, the base, down towards the bottom, reloading with green and brown. This one I think I want to have add a little bit more of an of a kind of a curve. So if this is the center in through here, maybe I've got this one coming out over in through here. And again, it, if you bump into your leaves or your petals, don't worry about that. You're, you'll be able to definitely um, rectify that later. I don't need one on here because this one is off the viewing range. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to add my, my leaves on top of my, um, my stems and behind my flower. So I think on this one, maybe I, I'm going to have a, um, a leaf coming out over here. So these leaves, again, are kind of on the longer pointy side. Maybe I have one kind of com coming out over in through here, just a little bit of a point over on the edge, just to give the implication that there's, that there's something behind there. I'm going to have a couple of big leaves coming off in through here. So maybe this one comes up like this and maybe it gets a little bit wider in through here. And I like to have my greenery or my foliage really look nice and natural. So that's why I tend to use a lot of um, shades of greens and browns and stuff as I'm creating these. I think this one I'm gonna have going behind this one, something like this. And these, um, these particular leaves on sunflowers are real they've, they've got substance to them because these sunflowers themselves have a lot of substance to them so they um, they're nice and big and I like to give a lot of movement and a lot of natural look to them so well, I'm not sure I like that part so I think I'm gonna add we're gonna just put another leaf in through there <laughs> so this one's gonna have maybe a little bump on the top here and again, I'm just going off of um, various photo references that I was looking at for these particular flowers. So you can certainly bend, mold, and shape yours whatever way that you like. This one over here, I think I'm going to have one in through here. And we'll get them to look like they have much more dimension when we start to add the highlights and shadows onto these particular um, leaves. I think I'll have one coming out here. The larger ones towards the bottom of the flower, those are the ones that are gonna have a lot more body to them and they, come, they can um, come out a lot farther and they have that um, bigger base to the actual leaf themselves. When they're smaller, like these ones, they almost just look like large pieces of grass coming out. I think we're gonna have maybe one coming out the side of here, like this, and then maybe I'll have a couple kind of making their way out from behind these petals in through here and maybe one over in through here. And I'm just giving, again, the essence of these little um, 
peekaboo spots of the of the leaves coming out the side just to give it a little bit more substance. I think I'm going to have a big one in through here kind of coming from the bottom of this um, this stalk of sorts. So maybe this one's going to be way over in through here. This one's going to be a fun one. I'm going to bring this over in through here. And you can see I'm just having fun. I know that these leaves really have a lot of, um, you know, they're just really big and, and they spread out pretty wide and flat. I'm going to have, let's see, another one maybe just coming up from from the base of the canvas in through here, implying that maybe it's coming from that one. Then coming off of here, I'll have one in this direction with the base of it maybe making its way over like this. And again, yours does not have to be exactly as mine. I'm just, I'm just having fun here. And again, it will look much more realistic once we start to put all of the um, added highlights and shadows. Maybe I'll have a little one kind of poking its head over from here, get one coming off and going off the canvas over here. So you can, you know, you can probably get the gist at this point that they've got the stem that, that protrudes from that center stem and then the um, leaf part itself kind of emerges from the end of that. And then I'm going to have some coming out from the base of this flower. So from behind those beautiful petals, just kind of poking some little pointy pieces from behind here, something like this. And again, they don't have to come out exactly as mine. If you, I'm just kind of maneuvering my brush around some of these little petals and getting some little areas to just kind of gently poke out from the side. And then we are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your base coat for your leaves and your stems on here, you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing the interior of the sunflowers. So again, kind of like I was, in alluding to earlier that there's many different varieties of sunflowers and there's lots of different looking centers to sunflowers too. Some are super dark, almost like black. Some are almost like a bright greenish yellow and they kind of go all in between in the spectrum of those colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a loose interpretation of just a whole bunch of little seeds inside my sunflower. I'm going to have an orange type hue to the seeds around the edge in through here. And then as I go towards that center, there'll be more on the greenish yellowy type of hue. So I'm using my large brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are brown, orange, chrome yellow, green, and white. And how I'm gonna be doing this is I'm gonna be using the tip of my brush, never a lot of paint, and I'm gonna be doing this in like a stippling type of technique. So I'm gonna start with orange and yellow to get my base coat of this exterior seeds going. So I have orange and yellow, and what I'm doing is I'm just lightly kind of tapping it in. I know because I have not put white on my brush yet that this mixture is going to be see-through which allows you to see the color underneath it. So this is going to be a safe place to start. And I'm bringing it all the way to the edge because you can still see my shadowy areas underneath which is great. And I'm just going to reload my brush with orange and chrome yellow and do that for all of them. I'm leaving that center area without, um, without this paint on it. I'm just doing this along the exterior um, edge of the sunflower. And then I'm going to just kind of reload my paint and repeat for each step or each flower. And yours might be more yellow than mine. Yours might be a little bit more orange than mine. But just know that I am just using the tip of my brush, which is allowing it to look nice and speckled. So that way it gives you the representation of those little seeds that are in the in the sunflower so i'm going ahead and i'm doing this little area in through here this one you might not see too much of the center area that we're going to go for 
Now that I've got that exterior, I'm gonna just dab my brush a little bit in white because I want there to be a little bit of a highlighted area to this exterior ring of sorts. So I have a little bit of white on my brush. My sun is up top, so I'm gonna put a little bit lighter of an area up towards the top of this exterior ring. And again, yours might not look exactly as mine. Yours might end up more vibrant than mine or more subtle than mine. It's, it, it really all works out. If you can get a little bit of a dimensional element into it, awesome. You know, um, that's, that's a great goal to have. But if yours ends up more on the solid side, that's okay too. It'll all work out. And I'm just kind of adding that bit of the highlight up towards the top. And I'm not going all the way to the exterior edge with this highlight because I do want to maintain um, a dimensional element. So I want there to look like there's a little bit of a shadow in there. So that's why I'm just kind of staying a little bit away from there. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna work on those center areas. So the center is where I'm gonna be using green, yellow, the chrome yellow, brown, and white. So I'm gonna start with green, yellow, and a bit of brown on my brush at the same time. And this is gonna create the little bit of that in interior color that I'm, that I'm looking for. So not, not much paint, just kind of getting this greenish type of hue in here with it not being too in your face bright or, you know, um, overpowering. Now that I've got that on there, I'm gonna pick up without washing my brush, just a teeny bit of white paint, and this is gonna provide a little bit of the highlight to it. So I'm just gonna kind of tap in a little bit of the white paint, just so it has a little bit of dimension to it. And you might find that you want yours to be lighter or darker than mine. It's all gonna be a, a bit of a visual preference on your part. If you can get it to look a little bit darker at the bottom of the center section, that's great. It'll give you a little bit, again, more of a dimensional element to it. And if you needed or wanted to do that, you could always just wipe your brush off, pick up a little bit of brown, and that will that will kind of reinforce the a little bit of a shadow underneath that, that center section. And then let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got the center of your flowers all nice and finished, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the second coat of our petals. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are brown, deep yellow, and chrome yellow. And I might use a little white as well, but if I do, I'll let you know. So the idea here is I'm gonna have a lot of shadow as the petals meet the interior part of the flower. I want these flowers to have a lot of dimension to them. So I'm gonna also have darker petals down at the bottom. So that's where I'm gonna bring in the chrome, or excuse me, the deep yellow and a little bit of brown down at the bottom. And I can use my brown as well to start putting little shadows between some of these petals. I'm not gonna go hog wild with it, but I'm just gonna maybe separate a couple of the petals so it almost looks like some of them are laying on top of each other. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm going to start with some brown and deep yellow on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna start at the um, area at the bottom of the flowers and I'm going to be bringing this color, because I'm not using white, the paint is gonna be nice and see-through for me. So this is going to allow me to get a nice kind of deep, rich color and have it translucent at the same time. I'm gonna bring some towards the um, bottom parts of some of these petals and I'm really just kind of rubbing it in in a um, direction of the petal itself. If I still have some of the original um, light yellow showing through, that's great. I just picked up more of just the chrome yellow, making sure that I've got a good representation of it throughout the majority of these petals and through here. And again, I'm just kind of rubbing it on. I'm not using a ton of paint as I get towards the upper region of the flower. Let me just add a little bit more of this 
uh, deep yellow onto here. As I get towards the top of the um, flower, I'm going to start using more of my chrome yellow and brown. So if you have a bunch of paint on your brush, just wipe it off on your paper towel and you can pick up a little bit of the chrome yellow and brown and that's going to start the shadowy area up towards the top region. The brown and the chrome yellow might turn a little greenish on you, so you don't necessarily want to turn the entire petal green. So if you do have a lot of brown left on your brush after you do this initial kind of um, application, just wipe it off on your paper towel, pick up some of the chrome yellow, and then you can get that chrome yellow to work its way into the full petals themselves. And if it is, on a, you know, has a little bit of a hue to it of the green, that's okay. And I'm just going to kind of keep going so I can get this vibrancy within my petals. And once I've got that, uh, the vibrant chrome yellow on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to pick up a little bit more brown. And this is where I can actually start to, if I want to, separate some of these front petals. So I just, in essence, kind of outlined or picked a couple of spots where I want some of these petals to look like they're in front of the one underneath. So you can really just provide the visual illusion of, the, of a petal by just kind of adding a little bit of a shadow underneath every one now and again. And it, you don't have to do a ton, just a few here and there, or even adding an extra little bit of brown coming out of the um, center of the flower, almost like <clears throat> these little, um, I don't know the correct terminology, but the little hairy things that connect the petals to the, the actual flower. Carry things. You can add a, a few more of those to add a little bit of detail. Um, and the, the petals are going to look a little dark at this point because we haven't added our highlights on top of it, which we will be doing that in a few minutes. So that's going to be, in essence, the um, shadow and the base color for the vibrancy of the of the petals and of course if you wanted to separate any of these you could pull a little bit of that brown out just a little bit more keeping that curved um, brush stroke so I'm gonna go ahead and do my next one so I'm just starting over wash and dry my brush I'm gonna pick up some of the deep yellow and the brown to get this area right where the petals meet the um, interior of the flower to emerge I'm going to keep reloading my brush with the chrome or the deep yellow and the brown to kind of give myself this second layer of the petals coming down in through here. And again, I'm using the deep yellow for these bottom petals because I want there to look like there's some great dimension within the flower itself. And by just doing this slightly darker tone of yellow down towards the bottom that's going to give the visual information that this in fact is the top and this in fact is the bottom without having to do too much work that just provides you with that um, visual information in an easy to follow kind of way so i've got the bottom portion now i'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel pick up some chrome yellow and brown to add the shadowy area up in through here and then start pulling it out if I wanted to travel out a little bit. Wipe my brush off on my paper towel. Pick up my chrome yellow. Boy, I know at some point I'm going to screw up these two color, these two yellow colors. So if I accidentally say chrome but meant deep yellow, I, I'm apologizing in advance. <laughs> but again, I'm just kind of using this chrome yellow. I'm not using white in it right now because it's provided me with enough of that vibrant color that I am going for. So that one looks good to me. I'm going to add a couple of little shadows underneath a few of these petals down in through here. So I'm just kind of visually picking a couple of spots that I think I can make a, a petal emerge just by adding this little bit of a shadow kind of um, look underneath some of them. 
you, and again, you might feel that you want to go more vi or more, you know, intense with your shadows for these um, for these petals down below. And I'm doing it more down below because, again, my my sunlight is coming from up top, so it would make more sense for me to have more shadows down on these bottom ones than it would on the top ones. And I'm really just going for a loose interpretive type of um, flower here. We're not going photorealism. We're just going fun realism. <laughs> so just have, have fun with it. If you can add some good dimension, awesome. So again, I'm going to go to the next flower here, just washing and drying my brush. I'm picking up some of my deep yellow and a little bit of brown to get this shadow started as it, the flower um, touches the, these bottom petals in through here. So that's my brown and yellow. And again, I want to kind of get that brush to go in the direction of my of my petals that I feel that they're going in. And so now I'm going to just pick up my deep yellow to finish getting the, this color on these bottom ones. And I can see now that I've decided that I guess this flower is going to be in front of that flower. So they will they they're going to kind of overlap here for a little while and they they'll by the time I'm done, they'll they'll look like they have their own separate spaces. But right now I'm just kind of getting this deep yellow on these bottom ones and because I am just using a a real, you know, sketchily fun paint stroke in through here, I'm going to get a lot of um it, a lot of variety in my colors. Oops, let me wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up my chrome yellow and my brown to go ahead and add that shadow in through here where these um, brighter petals are going to meet the interior and then just kind of pull it out just a little bit. This one I don't need to pull out much because it's going to be um, going into this area that's leaning over, wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking up some of my chrome yellow, and then just getting this vibrant chrome color on top of these petals. And then I'm gonna repeat it for this last little piece of a flower over here. So just wiping my brush off, picking up a tiny bit of the deep yellow and the brown to get this bottom portion. So even when you just have a a little portion of a flower like this, you still want to go through the same process to make it work with everything else. So you don't want to forget about the, you know, if you if you are doing uh, an accent uh, object on, on the painting, you don't want to forget about it. You want to pay the same amount of attention on this one that you do every other one. Oh, I forgot shadows underneath those petals. I'll go back to that in a second. I'm just picking up now my yellow, chrome yellow and brown to get my little shadow in through here. And then I'll wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up some chrome yellow to get that vibrant yellow in through here. And then I will wipe my brush off. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of little shadows underneath one or two of these petals and through here and then I'll go ahead and do it on this one because I forgot about that one. <laughs> so just a little bit of brown on here. Let's see, I think I can put one. I'll put one right coming in through here. And again, I'm just kind of scooting a little bit of brown underneath uh, uh, one of the petals or two of the petals, you know, just to give the information that there's some shorter petals and some longer petals and they're over you know maybe laying on top of one another so that way it's not so uniform throughout the whole thing and then maybe pulling some of these um, distinct shadows coming out of the um, of the center of the flower just to give you that delineation between a couple of the petals as they come out of the flower itself. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this layer of your petals on here, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are finishing our stems and our leaves. So I'm going to use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And I'm going to use my um, chrome yellow for this one. 
So what I'm really looking to do is add shadows and highlights. So for me, obviously the sun is way up top, but it might not be shining on all of these leaves throughout here because the leaf might be shadowed by one of the flowers. So there is, you know, kind of the thought, the or the highlights are gonna be at the top and the shadows are gonna be at the bottom. However, you've got these flowers that are gonna throw a kink into your plan. So you can really just have fun with this. I'm gonna put some shadows in some distinct areas and some highlights in some distinct areas, but the rest can be kind of carefree. So for my, sh my distinct shadows, I will definitely have some underneath here where this flower or where each flower is definitely casting a shadow upon the, um, the stem or the, pet, the leaves underneath it, as well as like in through um, between where these leaves start to emerge. I'll have little shadows going in through there and little and shadows down at the bottom of the canvas. So that way it gives you definitely a visual dimension to it um, that makes sense. And then we'll add highlights to the edges of the petals and stuff like that. So I'm gonna start with my shadows. I'm gonna start with my big brush and with a little bit of black, brown, and green on my brush. And of course you can tweak and um, make it more intense if you want to or less intense. So I'm going to, I'm gonna just kind of start at the bottom of this one and I'm adding a little bit of a shadow down at the bottom of here. And then I'm gonna add, oops, <laughs> I made that one grow a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow coming in through here and then maybe another little shadow in through here. And I'm just getting it to kind of blend up into that whatever piece. So if I add a shadow here, I just have it blend up into there. If I have a shadow here, I have it blend up into there. So black, green, and brown are the colors that I have on my brush. I think I'm gonna have a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of here. And as I'm doing this, I'm trying, again, trying to get it to blend into whatever is next to it. I'll have a little bit of a shadow underneath here. So these ones are fun when you do them underneath the um, actual flower itself. You can make them kind of go diagonal. It doesn't have to just blend into. Um, it can have a nice clean line because it could be a distinct shadow from a petal or something like that. So like right here, I think I'm going to have some fun with this one. Let me just reload my brush here. Black, brown, and green. I'm going to have this one kind of representing maybe that little petal there. So I can have this one coming out in like a little point coming off of here and that's going to give the viewer the information that oh this is a shadow of that petal that's sitting above it which is always a neat illusion to have this one i'm not going to have a shadow on this one i'll have a little bit of a shadow in through here something like that this one maybe i'll have a little shadow going in here i've got one in through here so you'll see what as I as I start to get going here, I become a little bit more carefree, just knowing that the shadows I'm going to have, I'm using the black, green, and brown. I'm doing them at the bottom of the stems, and then the underside of some of the the leaves that are coming off, and anywhere I feel that might be kind of inside that stem that might be shadowed by the neighboring leaf of sorts. And as I put the highlights on in a second, this will all um, make a tremendous amount of sense. <laughs> but right now, I'm just, because I'm just adding the shadows, it's looking a little bit unfinished, but that's that's the process of painting. You know, you, it always goes through that not finished stage, but I'm just definitely still just adding some some darker areas down at the bottom. This one in through here. Let's see, I think I'm gonna have a little shadow in through here. Let this one kind of emerge out the side. And wherever you put your stems, that's probably gonna dictate where you know your where your brush travels. So you'll you'll be able to see where you know where you've had this one come out or this one come out and just think of the inside the inside side of it where it touches that center stem is where it would probably be the darkest. I got a little piece over here. I've got a little piece 
underneath here that I want to get some shadow on. So this is going to be nice there, maybe a little bit in through here. And now that I feel like I've got some good shadows on there, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and now I'm going to add the highlights. So the highlights are in essence going to kind of blend into or finish the main coat of that leaf. So I know that I'm going to have, I'm using my chrome yellow. I'm not going to pre-mix a color. I'm just going to use my chrome yellow and my white and my green on my brush. You could, I guess, pre-mix like a light green or of sorts to, to do this, but I'm just going to use them all three on my brush and kind of tweak it as I go or as I want to with the, with the um, green paint. So I know that I'm going to have a nice bright highlight in through here. And the more intense you want your highlight, just add more white and yellow to it. That'll make it nice and bright. I think I want a little bit in through here. I'm gonna have a little bit in through here. So as I'm doing this, I'm saying, okay, well, this is where I want my highlight to go. In a second, I will be um, blending it in and making it a little bit more vibrant with my, with my green. But right now, I'm just kind of laying the groundwork and getting all these these beautiful highlights to just kind of emerge. Maybe this one is gonna just go right in front of that just a little bit. But for me, I mean, blending is going to be part of this process, but I like to kind of um, set the stage to, it makes my brain go easier when I know where these highlights and shadows are, and then I can get them to start to blend in with the with the rest and make sure it all looks nice and finished so that's why i'm doing it in this order you can really do it in, you could do a regular the the finish the base coat with your green and then you add your highlights and your shadows on top of it but i am doing it this way which will force me to put enough layers on here to make it look really nice and natural so this one's going to have a nice highlight kind of in the middle i think i'm going to go ahead and add uh just a little little green and through there a little bit over here a little bit over there and then once i've got those on there i want to add some little bits over here so again green yellow and white is where i'm starting with these with these highlight colors and then i will come back in and um just make sure that it all blends with the center of that flower as well so i'm really just enjoying the process here making sure that it's really nice and natural in the color and it doesn't look too green or too yellow or too brown i'm just really going for a nice natural look so i've got my highlights kind of planned out now i just picked up some green without washing my brush and i'm just going to kind of loosely get all of this to blend in and make sure that it makes sense with one another and if i feel like after i get the um, green on here that there's still any areas that I feel might need a little enhancing or a little more information I would definitely go back and just kind of tweak it a little bit but these to me are looking pretty pretty good they've got some great dimension to them they've got some good variations of green tones and nice warm natural tones to it so I am definitely one who likes the natural organic colors on my paintings as opposed to very vibrant um, unnatural colors so i tend to use lots of warm tones my browns i like to use those a lot um, but when it comes to doing stuff like this like leaves you're definitely going to see that i've got some some depth where they're they're darker in areas um, with the with that nice deep base that we put to it but I really want it to look natural so I definitely want you to make sure that you don't know, want me to be able to represent the green tones in it I think that's looking pretty good but I'm going to add just a tiny bit more highlight on the tips of these to make sure that we've got enough sunshine so I'm just I didn't wash my brush I just picked up a tiny bit of the chrome yellow and white and just making sure that I've got as many little bits of highlights on here as I want and you can see even just popping in these little streaks of the um, of the white is gonna make it look like oh my god there's way more sunshine there than I thought that there was and you this is one of those steps that you can just keep adding layers and layers but if you're 
if you continue to add layers, just try not to over blend. Just really go for those pops of uh, sunshine, just peeking their head out and continue to play with it until you feel that you've got it where you want it to be. And then we are gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your leaves and your stems nice and with fun dimension to them, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding the highlights to our petals or we're finishing our petals. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. My dominant colors are gonna be white and chrome yellow, but I might throughout this process, because I'm finishing the petals, I might bring some of the deep yellow and or brown in uh, if I feel I need to enhance anything a little bit, but I'll let you know if I'm gonna do that. So my thought process is, is the sun is up high, so my, my brightest light is gonna be up at the top of the sunflowers, but I also want you to understand, or the viewer to have the information, that there is a little bit of sun hitting these and or they have contour to them so they're they're round a little bit so we can add little bits of highlights on the part of these petals down below that that is closest to the viewer so that would be the part that bumps out the most so i'm going to start with white and chrome yellow on my brush at the same time so i have about equal parts of both and this is where i can start to get these top petals to really start emerging. I don't want to cover the whole thing with this vibrant white yellow combination, but I definitely want the viewer to understand that there's a bunch of sunshine just casting its beautiful warmth upon these flowers. But again, I don't want to take away all of that yellow, so I have to really be conscious about not overdoing it. And when I am doing these top ones, I can certainly utilize this color to separate some of these petals similar to how we did the shadows down below you can do the same thought process with these ones up top with with the highlights of the of the white so i'm going to do that to to the top portion of them and then as i come down towards the bottom portion i might not even need to reload my brush i could just use the remnants of what i was using up top and just kind of lightly go through these and add a bit of a highlight on that part that is poking out the most or closest to us. And if that doesn't if that doesn't do it for you, you can always add a bit more of the chrome yellow and or white and that will get you to have these pieces down below pop out even more. So adding the chrome yellow on top of the deep yellow gives you a sense of a highlight down below as well. And then you just kind of keep tweaking any of these little petals that you feel need any more finessing and then you just go right ahead to your next flower but i think i need i think i need a little more sunshine over in through here so i think my my sun once we put the sunglasses on is going to tell us that these should be a little bit brighter so i'm just adding a bit more white into there so now i'm going to go ahead and reload my brush with white and yellow the chrome yellow and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here. So as I'm doing these, I'm keeping my brush in a curved kind of fashion. So it is telling the viewer that these petals are in fact curved and I'm not bringing that highlight all the way to the center. It's just really um, encapsulating the brightest, oops, I just picked up some of that deep yellow, that's all right, um, the brightest part to them. I'm gonna add a little bit of white and my chrome yellow onto my brush to get some of these highlights in through here. And this is where if you wanted to, you could certainly pick up more of that deep yellow if you felt that that was going to enhance this any for you or give you um, a little bit more of the variety that you, that you might be desiring. You could certainly add more of the deep yellow or the chrome yellow, whatever whatever you want to do to bring it into that vibrancy. I definitely want to make sure that I've got some awesome brightness up at the top. So I'm kind of loading on some thick um, white areas in through here. I'm going to add some more in through here because I really want it to read as sunshiny. So I need to have 
a bunch of highlight in through there. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit more in through here. And this is, you know, again, just one of those steps that you can keep it, sometimes stepping away and looking at it from a distance might help you to see where you might want to add some, you know, additional hues or colors or dimension to it. And you just kind of keep playing with it until you've got it in that vicinity that you want. I just added a little bit more of the deep yellow in through here. I think I want a little bit more of that deep yellow over on this side. But again, that's just something that was calling to me so i made sure that i added it in there and then i'm going to go ahead and move on to my next one so i just washed and dried my brush so i can start fresh with my chrome yellow and my white on this one over here and again i see or i feel that my most sunshine is going to be over in this vicinity here and again you can see that i am not painting the entire petal i'm really just providing it with highlights. So I don't need the whole thing to be white. I want there to be some glimmers of white, but I also want that yellow to remain the star of the show because the yellow is the iconic color for these flowers. So I wanna make sure that that remains true to the flower and that we don't dilute it with too much white or too much of the uh, deep yellow and then as I come down towards the um, the other petals in through here I again want a highlight on them but I don't need it to be um, too powerful so I'm going for some of my chrome yellow and deep yellow and some white and if I want to enhance some of these petals to make you understand that they are individual petals I just kind of follow along with what I did for the shadow and providing you with that um, brightest part being where it bumps out the most and where it's closest to the viewer. So I can continue to kind of give those little pops of information along the edges. And of course you can certainly continue to tweak it as much as you want to. And then I have this last little one over in through here. So again, white and chrome yellow are where I'm starting with my brightest of my bright sunshine where I want that to go, keeping it with a little bit of a curve along those edges to make the, to provide the movement to it. Picking up some more of my chrome yellow just to get this to blend in and make sure that I don't lose the look of the yellow itself. And then as I come down towards this bottom area, doing any little enhancing I need to. And then of course you can sit and fiddle with them all you want, but we are going to be switching to our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful petals all nice and finished and as sunshiny as you want them to be, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the frames of our sunglasses. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and the colors I'm using are black and brown. I will also be using water within my mixture as well. So I am gonna be going for just a very generic sunglass shape. I'm not going for each one to be exactly the same, but they are definitely gonna resemble one another. Um, and you could certainly do any shape you want. You could do any color you want. You could do red glasses or purple glasses. You could do aviator glasses. You could do those cat eye glasses. You could really do whatever you like to do. Um, I'm just gonna kind of give you a simplistic version um, and how to construct them. And then if you wanna steer it in your own direction, feel free to do so. so you could also, I'm gonna be using watered down paint to do the outline of these. You could certainly use a pencil if you feel like you might wanna make some adjustments to it, um, but I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush and I'm dipping it in water and then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and a little bit of black. And I'm just gonna kind of mix those together a little bit, or you could just have them on your brush at the same time. It, it really doesn't matter as long as it's a little watered down so that way it's a little bit on the translucent side um, and you can 
you can play, play with it a little bit more. So I'm gonna have my sunglasses all kind of tipped in a little bit different direction. I'm going to assume that this is my sunflower nose <laughs> and this is kind of like the mouth or the bottom of the the sunflower nose so i'm going to have the bridge of my glasses is going to be near the top of these center areas so i'll have the bridge of the glasses and then i'll have the left and the right side if you feel you want to put a little arm to the glasses you certainly can i'm going to have the top corners of my glasses kind of overlapping into the petals a little bit or the whole sides of them are going to overlap into the petals a little bit but you could make yours larger or smaller or whatever you want but it would definitely make sense if the arms um where the arms go is in the petals because that would be able to stick in there as opposed to it wouldn't be able to stick into this, the center part. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and do my first one here. So I'm gonna assume that this is the bridge of the nose. So I'm gonna, the bridge of the nose, the bridge of the sunflower nose. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a kind of uh, upside down uh, oval and it's, mine is gonna be tipped a little bit to the side, something like this and then just kick it out a little bit at the bottom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make the top area is gonna be a little bit on the curved side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and bring it a little bit past the edge of my sunflower. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side. And one side might end up looking a little bit bigger than the other one, just because you've got it tipped at an angle, it's okay. And if they're not exactly proportionately correct, that's okay too. It's a sunflower with glasses on it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down and back up and make, make it meet wherever I want on that side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and try and give this side a similar type shape. But again, it might end up being a little bit um, larger on this side it might end up being a little bit tipped differently so you know it's all, it's all going to work out in the long run so something like that and then if I felt that I needed a little bit of an arm I could just kind of poke a little bit down through there if I wanted to and then I'm going to go ahead and do the next one so for me I'm going to do this one up in the top right next I'm going to say the bridge of my nose is somewhere in through here I'm going to add a little bit more black so you guys can see it on camera. So I'm going to do a little bit of a bridge in through here and maybe bring this one down a little bit in through here. So maybe this one ends up a little bit wider than the one over here. They Again, they don't have to be exactly the same. I'm going to have this one is going to be, he's looking up in that direction. So I'm going to just kind of bring this one up like this. And then this one is going to be probably a little bit shorter because it's, tipped uh, at a different angle, but I still want it to look pretty similar to one another. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom portion of the glasses. So this is gonna come somewhere in this vicinity. And again, they don't have to be exactly the same as the one that you did on the, on the other sunflower. You just want this side to look pretty similar to that side. It doesn't have to look like this one down here. So just know that you've got liberty to make each one, each set of sunglasses different from one another. But of course this is gonna have a little bit of a angle because I wanna make sure that the bottoms are kind of the same, but it might end up being a little bit more narrow on this side because it's tipped in a different direction. That's looking pretty good to me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and of course because they're frames of glasses you can always tweak them a little bit if you feel like you you know you need to modify them a little bit to look like one another if they're a little bit off in their shape that's okay I'm going to go ahead and do this one down here so just reloading my brush with my black brown and my water mixture I'm going to have the bridge somewhere in through here right about here just bring it down a little bit so I can visually see and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have this one kind of looking up like that and then this one's going to kind of be in this direction and you can see I've got a system to my to my sun sunglass making process <laughs> then I'm going to go ahead and do this one is going to just kind of come up like this 
and I'm going to try and get the other one to go in a similar type of angle. I think I need this one to go out a little bit more. There we go. Something like that. And then I'll go ahead and do this one. This one's got a little bit crooked. It came off his nose a little bit crooked, but that's all right. Again, I want to kind of keep it at a similar angle in through here. So I'll bring this one down like this and then just get this side to look pretty similar. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. Just something similar will work just fine. And then this guy over up top here, this one's gonna be my easiest one because you only got one side to, to go from. So I'm gonna just kind of give this one a mark like that. And then I'll bring this down in through here like this. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your frames of your glasses, you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the glass part in the sunglasses. So I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black and orange paint and I'm going to be using a rubbing type of technique. So I want these glass parts to be see-through, but I want it to be like tinted. So I'm going to have watered down black and orange on my brush, and I'm going to start at the top of each glass, and I will put it at the top, and then I'm going to rub it down. So it's going to be, in essence, kind of a little bit darker at the top, and then more see-through as it comes down towards the bottom of that glass. So I'll show you how I'm going to do this. And both of these colors are translucent, especially when you have a little bit of water in them. So you don't need a ton of black, um, but just know that if it goes wrong, just add some more water and you can lift it right off of the canvas. So I've got black with a little bit of orange and I'm just going to kind of mix them together. So it's almost like... Um, like a dark rusty kind of color and again it doesn't have to be perfect or exactly like mine i'm just adding a touch of water into my mixture and once i've got it i'm just going to wipe it off on my paper towel or on the side of my palette and then so it's watered down on my brush i'm going to start at the top of oh actually let me start in this middle one so it'll be a little bit easier for you to see so i'm going to start at the top of the glass and through here with a little bit of paint. And then I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel so I don't have too much paint. And then I'm just gonna rub it down so you can still see through it, but it in essence is giving a dark tint to everything that it's sitting on top of. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the next glass. I'm gonna start up at the top with it pretty dark, maybe a little bit more so it is definitely evident. So we've got it pretty dark up at the top, wiping my brush off on my paper towel, and then just rubbing it in there so you can see through it, but it's tinting the, um, the stuff that's behind it. And I'm just gonna repeat that step for all of the glasses. So I start up at the top, put it up there. If I have a good quantity of paint on my brush, I don't have to wipe it off on my paper towel. I feel like I have a good quantity of paint on my brush for this one, and then I'm just rubbing it down. So picking up a little bit more, putting it up at the top. I feel like I have too much. Oh, no, I feel like I have enough. <laughs> Sometimes you, you just got to feel whether or not you have the correct quantity of paint on there. And that one worked out just fine. So I'm going to go ahead, do this one over here. And of course, you could certainly go for black lenses if you wanted to. If you didn't want to see through them like mine or if yours went awry and you're like, oh, no, I can't pull it back. You can certainly go for black lenses. I mean, most sunglasses or a lot of sunglasses have that black um, lens to them. We're going to be adding a highlight on them in a minute, so you could certainly go for that if you wanted to. And then I'm going to do this last one over here. So start at the top. A little bit too much on my brush on that one, so just wipe it off. And then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're in essence finishing our sunglasses, which is gonna entail highlights and shadows, which will be intensifying your frames. It's gonna add some shadow underneath and then we're gonna put a little glare in the actual glass part itself. So I'm gonna start with the shadows 
on the sunflower, which are created from the sunglasses themselves. So I'm going to be using the same mixture that I used for the glass part, which is my orange and my black watered down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some very strategically placed see-through kind of lines. So I'm going to have one on the bridge of the nose. My sun is up top, so the bridge of the nose is going to have one in through here. And if you can't see it, that means you need a little bit more paint um, and less water, but you definitely still want it to be on the see-through side, so I've got it there. I'm going to add one underneath here. I think I need a little bit more black so we can see it. There's no sense in putting it there if you can't see it. So I just added a little bit more black, but I still want it to be on the see-through side. So I've got this one coming in through here. Again, this is the shadow from the glass itself, from the sunglasses themselves. Something here, again, that shadow there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over onto this side, doing the same exercise. I'm doing a shadow here on the bridge. I'm gonna do a shadow underneath here. I'm going to do a shadow underneath here. So they're a little away from the actual glasses, the frame of the glass itself. Same thing over here. I've got a little bit in through here. I'm going to have a little bit coming underneath here. And then I have a little bit over here, not much. And then this one, I don't have anything on there. Now I'm going to wipe my brush or wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up straight black. So this black is going to add the shadow of the frames, in the frames. So to make these frames look three-dimensional, I'm going to add a shadow where the frame meets the glass as well as at the bottom of the actual frame itself. So I have just black on my brush. I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow underneath my frame right in through there. I'm going to add it underneath here. And you might, you know, feel that you want yours to be in a little bit different of placement. It's totally fine. This is just giving me some kind of depth to the um, frame of the glasses of the glass themselves, maybe underneath there as well. And then again, just reloading my brush with some black. This is going to give me my my shadow underneath the um, between the actual frame and the glass itself. And again, you can maybe yours is a little bit more intense than mine. Maybe you have yours, um, if you're doing a different color than mine, maybe you want yours to be more, um, you know, of a, of a darker region or you want to bring it out further, totally fine. But this is going to give you that nice clean edge to them. I'm going to go ahead and move on to my next one. So I've got my shadow underneath here, my shadow underneath here, maybe underneath the bridge right here. And again, this is on the glasses, on the frame of the glasses, bottom left of the piece of um, frame itself. That's going to provide the viewer with the information that the sun is up towards the top right of sorts. And then I've got this one in through here with the frame there, with a little bit of a shadow here. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put the highlight on the frame. So you could really, depending on what color glasses you have, you could do any color you want. I'm gonna do a black and white, and I might use a little bit of brown too, but just a little black and white on my brush is going to add the highlight on my frames. So I'm really just gonna kind of streak in a little bit of a highlight on maybe the top, tippy top, maybe a little bit on the bridge of the nose, maybe a little bit on the top over here. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, but it seems to it seems to want to keep creeping in the way. So something like that, maybe a little bit over on the edge if you've got if you feel like the edge would be um, highlighted by the by the sun in in, in in any way. Maybe a little bit over here. You could utilize some of your yellow or your orange. Whatever you'd like to do is totally fine. If you feel like part is not being visible enough, add it throughout the rest. 
You can have, you know, brown glasses. You can really create what, whatever um, intensity you want. This is just providing you with a little bit more dimension by adding these bits of, of highlights on it. You can have them really bright. You can have them subtle. Whatever, um, whatever look you're going for is totally fine by me. And I'm just kind of having fun streaking in these little, these little bits of highlights. Oh, that one got a good one. Excellent. So now I need to do the, the sparkle or the twinkle or the reflection on my glass part. So I'm washing and drying my small brush. And this I'm gonna be using white paint. If you felt that the white was a little bit too intense, you could certainly dull it down with a little bit of brown or a little bit of yellow, or you could even put a reflection of a scenery in there, whatever, whatever floats your boat. So I'm gonna just start with a tiny bit of white paint and I'm gonna do, each set is gonna have a little bit different of a look to it. So this one I'm gonna have like a starburst. So I'm gonna have, and the reflection is only gonna be in the glass itself. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a white dot and a similar spot on both glasses. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel and then I'm gonna streak it in kind of like a curved manner to tell the viewer that the surface of the glass is a little bit on the rounder side. So I'm gonna just kind of pull it out like this and maybe just a little bit in through here. So that gives the viewer the information that the, um, that the glass or the surface that it's on, it has a little bit of a, of a curve to it. And you can bring it as far out as you want. You can have it as intense as you want. And if you want that little center area to, to really pop, you can just kind of dot in that white a little bit brighter, right in that little tiny center. And that's gonna give you a really bright, bright, bright look to it. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. And this one, I feel like the head might be down a little bit, the sunflower head might be down a little bit. So I'm gonna put this one right up at the rim of the glasses. So somewhere in through here is gonna be my brightest of my bright spot. So, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this side as well. It's gonna be my brightest of my bright spot. And then I can just kind of pull it out in that little bit of a curved fashion. And whatever happens on one side, you wanna kind of make it mimic that's a similar way on the other side. So if I had a big streak there, I'd try and do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just gonna kind of get this to starburst out like the sun does and put that bright, bright spot right in the center. Come back and put that bright, bright spot right in the center if it, if it dulled out any. And then this one, I think I'm gonna have like a little kind of side streak to it. So I'm gonna come up and through here put this one in through here, maybe this one here, and then I just kind of pull it down, something like this. There we go, and do the same thing on this one, or a similar kind of movement. And you can see I'm trying to switch it up a little bit from one glass to the other, which just makes you know the diversity of it pretty fun. And then I think on this one, I'm just gonna put maybe a little little spot in through here. I'll get a little starburst in through here. And then we are gonna be using the same brush for the next step. So if you have any little, you know, design changes or little tweaks that you wanna do, now's the time to do it. And then you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I am going to be using black paint. I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom right. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like to be your identifying mark is totally fine. It's your painting. You sign it the way that you want to. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really fun summer image. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.